Have you ever been tested? Have you ever had your faith tested? Gone through a time that you had a decision on how to deal with it? Whether to lean on the Lord or to allow it to pull you away from Him? And where are you today? As a result of having gone through that period of testing, are you triumphant? Has God been able through that period of time to, to work his will in you in such a way that today you're closer, today your faith is stronger? As we look at the idea of triumph through testing, we see it as a positive perspective to perseverance. Because suffering it's not something any of us like, right? It's not something any of us want, that we desire. But yet, we can face each temptation. We can face each trial. We can face each, each time of turbulence in our life with a positive perspective. Realizing that, indeed, that there are times that our faith is tested and we if we approach it with the right faith and we approach it with the right attitude and seeking God's will in our life, that we can indeed come out better for having been through it. You ever asked this question? Have you ever been in a situation where you asked, why me, Lord? Father, I, I, I try to serve you. I'm faithful to you. I've given my life to you. And it seems like just when I just, just when I think that I, I've gone through one battle that I'm facing the next. I'm tired. I'm ready for a break. Why me? Sometimes I talk to people and they, maybe they'll come, come into the office and sit down and talk. Maybe they're sitting in their living room. They just kind of Spill their guts, as we say. And just talk about all that they're dealing with and what's going on in their life and how, how hard it is. And, and even, even maybe even that they're, they're questioning God and, 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 and they realize that their faith is being tried. And quite often after all of that's said and done and the tears are flowing, people look at me and say, you must think I'm awful. I say, no, I think you're human. Because that's, that's who we are. That's, that's how humans react to things. That is the human side of us. And, and we get tired and we, we, we just get tired of hurting sometimes, don't we? We just, we just get, get tired of the pressure, the pain. Well, it's okay to get tired. It's okay to be tired. It's, it's okay to, to, to feel frustration that is only natural to feel. And it's not okay to give up on God. As a matter of fact, if you, if you give up on God, then you've given up all hope. A God who made you knows you better than you will ever know yourself. He created you. He created you with all of the emotions that you feel. He created you with all of the strengths and the weaknesses of your flesh. He created you as, as a being who is spiritual. And He knows you and He understands you better than you will ever be able to understand yourself. And don't you think as, as a father that He cares that you're hurting and then somebody says, well, if he cares, then why am I still hurting? If he cares, then why am I still going through this? Why does it hurt so much? Why, why do I face all of these trials? Maybe you're facing what you face exactly because God loves you. I said, a preacher, you're just playing mind games with me now trying to make me believe that, that, that my persecutions or the trials that I face somehow means that God loves me? Well, 
I'm not one who claims to be able to determine when and where the reason for everything that happens in life is. Many times people will attribute things to God that may indeed, uh, may not be attributed to God's desire, but it, it could be the devil bringing persecution against you as he brought against Job. But yet even with Job, God was there, right? And, and, and God allowed Job's suffering. But when you read the book of Job and you look at the end result, you see Job as a person whose life was better, who was stronger, and who has gone down in history and millions of people have read his account and have gained strength because Job suffered. Maybe you have gone to the book of Job and you've read Job's suffering and it helped you to deal with your suffering. And there was a point finally where Job questioned. And he was so strong for so long. And finally it got to the point to where he questioned. And he said, I'd never been born. But the love of God and the power of God was yet to be shown in Job's life. And the end result of Job's suffering and his trials was yet to be seen at that point, but he saw it. You see, God knows that there are some things that I need. And I'm not saying that God necessarily brings the trials that you face in your life. It may be that He brings it. It may be that He allows it to happen for other reasons. It may be that He brought you to it. Or it may be that because of decisions that I've made that were against His will, that I face certain consequences in life. There are any number of reasons why I may face what I face in life, but this I know Whatever brought me to that point, one thing I know is that through that persecution or through those trials or through that temptation or whatever it may be that I'm facing at the moment, that God is there and He will never leave me. I know that He loves me. I know that He's my Father. And that even as a father, sometimes He sees and understands the need for correcting, for shaping, for disciplining. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 4 through 11, we read, You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. and You have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by Him. For whom the Lord loves, He chastens and scourges every son whom He receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? They indeed for a few days chastened as seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Did you catch that? Chastening is painful. It hurts. I don't like it. But I need it. Yesterday, Joshua asked me to sharpen one of his knives for him. And as I tested the edge, I realized it was pretty dull and it was going to need some very, some very major honing, which meant cutting away a lot of metal to get it to the point where it could be honed to a fine edge. I was sitting there at the table, much to Stacy's dismay. 
I'm pulling that knife through that sharpener to, to, to start to, to cut away. And I'm seeing those shavings on there. The knives don't hurt. But people do. And sometimes in order to get where we need to be, even, even to get to the point to where we can finally be honed to a fine edge, we've got to have some cutting. A sculptor looks, looks at, a, at a piece of, of a plaster of Paris or, or a stone or whatever material he's using, and he looks at that and he sees an image that needs to be there, and the way that he reveals that image is that he cuts away what doesn't need to be there. He carves it out and cuts it away and discards those pieces. They're no longer needed, and what is left is a beautiful piece of art. God sculpts us. He shapes us. He molds us. He makes us. He has an image. He has a plan. He has a reason. Sometimes, as his children, we need the loving hand of discipline to shape us and to mold us and to make us. Now, I don't know why. You are where you are in your life if you're hurting about something. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know that God is using this, uh, has brought this to you because you needed to be disciplined. But I do know that whatever the reason that God can use it to glorify Him and to make you a better person, that I know beyond any shadow of a doubt, God has the power in any and every situation to bring about what is best. And understand this. What is best is what glorifies God. If I am His child, my desire is to honor Him with my life, to glorify Him. And if I can glorify Him through persecution, if I can glorify Him through suffering, then that curse becomes a blessing because it shines with the glory of my Father, and it sends glory His way. When people see me, if they can see me hurting and see faith in God and love for God and God working through that and He's glorified, then praise God that I've had that opportunity to bring glory to His name. You see, the problem, the problem with our suffering quite often is because we think about ourselves. Because we forget that we've crucified ourselves to God. And our life is it's not about us. It's about Him. Now, when I see that and when I can get to the point to where I can empty myself of me, it could very well be that the reason that I'm suffering is because I need to be emptied. And I haven't gotten there yet. And the fire can burn out. Those impurities in my life, like the heat refines the gold. And I shine with a praise and an honor to God in my life. As a father who disciplines his child, if you love your child, you will discipline your child. You see, it's, it's selfishness that says, I don't want to discipline my child because I don't want to suffer the hurt that comes along with disciplining my child. That's selfish. That's not love. Now, my daddy used to have what he called the love board. About that long, about that thick, had my name written all over it. Because we got to sign it every time it was used on us. Called the love board. In the middle of it, he drew a heart the love board. I didn't really understand that at the time, but I understand it now. I understand it now. A father loves his child. He disciplines his child. God loves you, and that means that at some point he's going to discipline you because you're his child, and he wants what's best for you. Praise him in that. God knows that I need shaping like that Sculpture, or like the one who sharpened us. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Now, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be joyful about this? This hurts. Yeah, it hurts. 
Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. God has a plan. God has a, has a sculpture. He has a piece of art. He has an idea. He has a goal. And you're part of that. But you may need to be shaped a little bit. Cutting away hurts. Sometimes hurting is necessary. You see, uh, we, we, we get this idea. Somebody says, now wait a minute, preacher, this, this sermon's all wrong. You're supposed to be telling me how that I can feel, I can feel good and I can get rid of all the pain. Well, I'm sorry, you, you got the wrong preacher. I'm not going to tell you that. Because that's a lie. You're going to feel pain. You're going to go through hurt. You're going to have disappointments. But listen, that's life. And God is bigger than it all, and He is above all, and He cares, and He's going to love you through it, and He's going to bring you through it if you'll turn to Him. And in the end, you will be better, and He will be glorified because you went through it. You face it with faith. You see, this, this, this idea of removing pain is one that only sets you up for a fall because you can't do that. And so you face the pain with faith, with strength, with a love and a respect for God that desires to glorify Him in it. In Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5, not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Catch that. In, in, the, in the very passage, it talks about how that we suffer and how that we have tribulations, and that our perseverance through those tribulations brings out these fine qualities to God's glory in us, speaks of God's love for us. Don't try to separate God's love for you from the pain that you feel in life. That's the wrong road. Face the pain that you feel in life with a knowledge of God's love for you, and you're ready to deal with it. And you're ready to go down that hard road Sometimes we need to be humbled. I've been there. I've been there. You know, I, I look back in my life and I, and I see certain things that I've went through at certain times. And sometimes it hurt. And sometimes sometimes it, was a, it was a very dark road. And look where God has brought me. I can tell you, I can tell you this old boy has needed to be humbled more than once. And God saw to it that I was. And I thank him. Because I could have never gotten there by myself. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 through 6, You shall remember the Lord your God, the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness, speaking to the children of Israel, to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So here you are, child of God. You're at this point. You're in the desert. Why you're there, I don't know. Did God bring you to it? I don't know. Is it a result of choices, the consequences of those choices that you made? I don't know. Is Satan trying to destroy your faith? I don't know. I know this. When you're in the desert, that is the time to turn to God and to show your faith.
and your perseverance and keep his commandments and glorify him and trust him and he will bring you through it. Does that mean it's going to end? I don't know the answer to that either. But I know that he made a promise, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. You see, it's, it's easy to say, I love, oh, how I love Jesus. I put on my Sunday best and I come. And, Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. And things are good. That's easy. And yeah, I can glorify God in my blessings, but I tell you what, where that glory shines greatest is when I'm hurting and I'm still praising Him. Is when I'm, I'm struggling with the pain, trying to find my way, and my faith is looking to Him, and I'm saying, Lord, I don't understand, but You do. And I trust You. I'm going to do Your will in my life. You see, God knows what I need. The question is, do I trust Him? How does God test? Sometimes God tests by demanding great sacrifice, as with Abraham and Isaac. You know how that God had... God had promised Abraham, through you all nations shall be blessed. He gives him this, this child of promise, Isaac. And, and, and Abraham looks at that child playing in the dirt, and he smiles. And he remembers God saying, through you, all nations will be blessed. Why? Your seed will be as the stars of the heavens, the sand of the seashore. He looks at that child in his old age and his heart is warm and it's full. And one day, a cold chill runs down his back and horror fills his heart as he hears God say, Abraham, take your son, your only son Isaac, the child of promise that I gave you a go and sacrifice him to me. That was a great test. And as they're walking up that mountain, and Isaac looks up, Daddy, here's the wood. We got everything for the worship, for the sacrifice itself, for the sacrifice. Where's the sacrifice? How Abraham must have fought back a lump in his throat and the tears in his eyes. As he says, God will. I've never been called to make a sacrifice like that. I would like to think I would be Abraham. I don't know. I'd have to be there to know. But Abraham knew. Abraham knew when he faced it, when he got to that point, he looked at God. He looked, he looked to God for the answer, and he said, God will provide. We find out later that he, he realized, he knew, he understood that God was, was able to raise Isaac if that's what it took. And as his hand is, is above his son that he loves so much, doing that which he, he, he dreaded, about to plunge that knife into his chest, God stays his hand, and there's a sacrifice over there in the, in the bushes. God never intended for him to sacrifice his son. God knew that Abraham needed to go through that to bring him to where he needed to be in his faith. You know what? We get to look back on that and have our faith strengthened because of his strong faith. Who will look on your faith? Who will look at you where you are right now who will look at you where you will be in a couple of weeks or a couple of months or a couple of years when you go through that dark time? Who will look at you and look at your faith and be strengthened because you had the faith to trust in God? People will. And people will be stronger. And people will love God more. And people will trust God more. And some people who the devil would otherwise be able to, to reach and to pull into the fires of hell will be saved because of your example. Because you had the faith to go on. I don't know when. I don't know where. But people are watching. God told Solomon, 
gave him a choice. Ask for whatever you will. Solomon could have asked for any number of things. Great riches. To be the most powerful king in the world. You name it. God gave him a choice. He asked for wisdom. And because he asked for wisdom, because he trusted God and he saw what was truly important, God blessed him with oh so much more. Sometimes our test comes as a choice. Sometimes it's by proposing hard tasks to see if we truly trust him. And when Jesus was there and those multitudes were, uh, were, were hungry and they had followed him into the wilderness seeking to be healed, seeking to hear him, And he asked Philip, how are we going to feed all these people? And, and his disciples start turning and say, well, you know, it's so far to town. Boy, we better send them away, this, that, and the other. And Jesus took the little boy's lunch and he fed them. But he presented to them a task to, and he tested their faith. And then he showed his great power, even in spite, even in spite of their lack of realization of who he was and what he was capable of. Can you imagine having the very one whose power created all that there is? I say, well, we better go to the grocery store. There's no way we're going to be able to feed these folks. Maybe... Maybe there will be times there will be hard tasks ahead of you. Will you face them with faith? Maybe you need to suffer persecution. As Paul and Silas who were beaten and imprisoned. And yet, singing God's praises, glorifying God. And because of that, souls were saved and people were encouraged in their faithfulness. Maybe you also will be faced with the time in which you will be persecuted for the sake of righteousness, through no fault of your own. Will you glorify God in that? First Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 13. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings, that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. You see, the idea is not to hope and pray that you can live life without persecution. The idea is not to hope and pray that you'll never hurt or you'll never suffer. We don't like pain, but we need it. We need it. So the idea is to take your trial, to take your temptation, to take your persecution, to take your storms and your hardships and your valleys and your mountains and take them to God and pray for the wisdom to see His purpose and to trust Him. And above all, regardless of whatever else, may happen in that circumstance to know this, that as you go through that, your life glorifies God. Listen. This life is just a moment. It is a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away, and then there's eternity. And if suffering would be my plight here in this life for a moment, and I can be granted the eternal joys of heaven with God forever... I'll gladly take it. Don't throw away an eternity in heaven because of a moment of temptation or trial here on earth. Be strong. Look to God and lean upon your brothers and sisters. If we can pray with you or for you, we're here to do it. It may be that you're facing a time of persecution, a time of trial or sickness or something that, that's hurting you right now. We are here. We want to hurt with you. We're not going to run away from the pain. We want to experience it with you. We want to go through it with you. We want to pray with you to bear your burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ.
maybe there's sin in your life, and you realize that you need to get your life right with God. And let us pray with you and for you about that this morning. And if you're not his child, would you come to him in simple, humble obedience, repenting of sin, confessing Jesus as the Son of God, to be buried with him in the waters of baptism for the remission of your sins? If we can assist you in whatever way, would you come while we stand and sing? God is calling the prodigal, come without delay. Hear, oh, hear him calling, calling now for thee. Though you've wandered so far.